everybody. This is uh, the community team uh, from Deep Haven. Uh, this is January week one, and we got another demo for you. So first off, we're gonna show uh, we're gonna have Dev uh, Devin demo uh, some stuff, our new plugin functionality. So here's Devin. Hey everybody, let me share my screen here. Bender, can you see my screen? Yep, looks good. Great. Um, so we're uh, for our next release, we're going to have some plugin support, um, which allows users to install libraries to serialize custom objects. And we're trying to make it really easy to do that from Python as well as in Java. Um, so there's going to be some sort of structure um, around uh, these objects that you want to do. And, and, and pretty much there's going to be three important fields, a name for the type, uh, a check for the type, and turning the type or turning the object into bytes so we can turn it, we can return it back to the client. And so this is about as simple, I think, as we can get. Um, and it um, this one specifically relies on matplotlib. Um, so if you go ahead and we go ahead and list what we've got on our server, a, a pip list command, You'll see we've got matplotlib installed, and we've got the deep haven plugin matplotlib, which is this code essentially right here. Um, just for a little bit of reference, um, during startup, there's going to be some sort of auto discovery that will log out so you can see what plugins are being discovered. And you can see during startup, we registered this matplotlib um, plugin. So what we can do now is we can run some Python here. Um, let me go ahead and copy my code from over here. And we're just going to create a matplotlib figure here um, and execute it. And then it says, OK, we've got our figure. It's returned. So I basically, this is what you would do in the web UI. I'm just doing it from the console here. So we've got a um, variable now called mfigure. That is this matplotlib thing that I've created. And what we can do is we can go ahead and fetch it now. Um, you, you give it a variable. You give it a name. Um, and then it's going to return the binary data. And I'm going to dump it out to disk as a PNG. As we see up here, I'm saving the figure as a PNG bytes. So I go ahead and do that. Um, we can see it also prints out the type and the size. And I've piped this to disk. And if all goes well, we should see a PNG here. I should be able to open it. And there we go. So that's our matplotlib figure that has been serialized from server to client via a plugin architecture. Uh, so in the future, we'll be able to see this type of functionality integrated into um, the web UI. And it's not going to be just matplotlib. It's going to be whatever you want to serialize. So that is plugins. All right. Very cool. Uh, and the UI portion will be coming uh, to that soon. Next up, we have Christian. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm going to show some progress on the Divisium demo. I've been working on and off on it. I went on vacation, did some work before vacation, then coming back. I'm working some more. Uh, it's not complete yet, but I can show what we have so far. And there are some interesting like building blocks that uh, make sense to like you know highlight. So I'm going to share my screen. Okay, so hopefully you're seeing my screen right now. Yep. We just have like a terminal window here. <clears throat> and uh, we have a branch and we have like the payment community. And there is a new directory here that is called Division Demo. Inside Division Demo, there isn't much really, which is <coughs> thanks to the Docker magic and Docker Compose magic. Um, we are inheriting a lot of stuff that we're actually getting from infrastructure that Divisium and MySQL already created. So if we look at this Docker Compose file, we see here the typical components that we're used to see for the payment itself. Um, there is a more explicit declaration of Red Panda because it needs a few modifications that we do not have in the Red Panda that we inherit from the um, top level Compose common. So one difference here, if you compare this to the one in the Red Panda directory that we use for 
uh, Kafka, when we do uh, Kafka demos and, and work, uh, is that we are not including it from the top level. We have some explicit declaration here. Uh, but the interesting parts that are kind of like completely new, um, we have an image for Divisium and we have an image for MySQL. So what is this thing, right? So this is change data capture is what Divisium does. We're going to have a MySQL database with a relatively simple database that is trying to simulate uh, an e-commerce uh, site. And we're, have, we're going to have a few tables. The tables are going to be getting updates. And Divisium is going to turn the updates happening in the database into events in Kafka, in Red Panda in particular. And we're going to be getting those events in the payment. That's the thing that I'm going to show. Um, the last thing here, uh, this little image called load gen, is uh, a Python program that what it does is it generates the updates to the database, right? Um, this is essentially taking advantage of what Division already did for their demo that has most of the definition for the MySQL image. Um, this is their version of the MySQL image, et cetera, right? So that's what explains that essentially we don't have that many files here. And actually, if you look at the file length, uh, is they are not that big either. If we take a quick look at what that uh, generated load script does uh, in the load gen uh, image that we're going to have, um, it has some MySQL connection configuration, and we're going to be creating a couple of tables. And I am interested in these two tables here because we're going to show them in the Haven in um, a few seconds, uh, chop items and chop purchases. So um, let's start this thing. I'm going to the Divisium demo directory. As you know, Docker Compose depends on the directory to know which particular Docker Compose YAML file to use. So I'm using the one in that directory in particular. We have a couple of images starting. This is a little bit you know, more, more fat of a Docker Compose setup that we're, we're used to. Uh, MySQL and Divisium are there, and they're not small. Um, so we have, you, you can see in the log, Divisium, Red Panda, and MySQL um, in between. There was a little bit of a scrolling as the tables were configured and such. Um, so now we can probably go to um, Deep Haven, connect to the web console, import the consume Kafka. Um, Python support. And uh, the name of the topics essentially match, matches the um, name of the tables. If you see my highlight there, uh, with a prefix of MySQL for the database, which is something that uh, Division creates. I'm defining a variable here uh, for uh, Python so that I don't have to repeat this whole string. And you can see that uh, in our consume to table invocation, which is what's going to create our, our deep haven table, right? We're going to call that table purchases. Um, we have both um, a key and a value that uh, Divisium essentially created for us. And it did register in the schema service that Red Panda started. Um, actually, if we go here to the console again, um, and we make uh, a curl call into um, the endpoint for the schema service, we can see that we have a couple of Avro schema definitions registered in the schema service for um, that Red Panda implements in, in their image. Uh, and there is essentially one pair. If you, if you look here, the order is not great, but you can see that there is a dash key and a dash value for each one of the tables, right? Uh, so we're going to be using that here uh, when we define uh, the key and the value that we want to be reading. So anyway, we do that. Takes a little bit. And we have some rows. Uh, these tables are, are pretty wide in terms of number of columns. You can see here that it, there's a bunch of data. Um, these events are really more geared toward completeness than they are. Uh, uh, <laughs> compared to performance, um, because they have lots of data. Every time there is a change, uh, you can have the data that was before, if it was an update, right? And then the result after the update, which is the after here, you can see that, you know, if we compare to uh, what we have um, in terms of table definition, right? 
um, we were looking at the purchases table. So we go, got, we go back, um, purchases down here. We have an ID, user ID, item ID status. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight columns. Um, this has a lot more columns because essentially there is a version for before, a version for after. Um, and then we also have some context related to the uh, particular transaction in MySQL where this happens. So there is a lot of data here that is not just the table itself, right? Um, so, okay, that was the purchases table. Um, I can go back here and just change the variable. I can go do the job items and I change the table name to items. And now we have the item sale. So that's what we have so far in terms of building blocks. Um, what I need to do from here is essentially convert these events that are showing up and I'm capturing right now as a table type append um, into a table type streaming and create a listener so we can actually get the table itself as a ticking table instead of the events that represent the changes. So uh, that's it. That's my then. All right. Very cool. Awesome. Yep. Uh, next up, we have Chip showing off a new integration. All right. Can you guys see my screen? Yes. There we go. All right. So I have been uh, targeting the uh, quantitative finance community. Um, so Interactive Brokers is a uh, brokerage most people have never heard of, but in the quant world, um, most quants have a, an account there. Um, IB has um, an API that allows you to, um, you know, do everything you want. You can pull market data, you can pull historical data, you can get positions. Um, and uh, anyway, it's a great platform for setting up uh, quantitative strategies. So, uh, you know, they have this product here called Trader Workstation. It is a uh, job application. And um, anyway, I have created an integration for that. So right here, um, we can take this little bit of code here and run it. Uh, that didn't work. There's a, a race condition in IB's implementation. So sometimes you need to run it twice. Um, so anyway, we have now connected. You can see, we wait a second. We get a list of the associated accounts. Uh, we have, um, let's see, we have contracts. We have, um, should have positions and other things here. Uh, anyway, there are positions as well. Um, Right now, you can go through and uh, define a contract here. I'm going to get a contract for Apple, and that will uh, go to IB, get their definition of the contract, and return that as a registered contract. And using that, you can then uh, request market data. And the um, anyway, the account that I have set up has minimal data on it right now, but you can see that uh, you know, right now it is uh, getting prices. The uh, market is closed, so there's not many ticks right now. Um, you know, I'm trying to get some of these other feeds working, uh, but you can see they're airing out right now because I need to get a subscription to the data. So anyway, this is a kind of a cool thing, and it is in progress, and hopefully we'll we'll have uh, this rolled out shortly. All right, very cool. Well, that's it for this week. Uh, we'll see you next week with another demo. Bye.